So everyone, welcome to the depot tour. Our lovely driver will be taking us to the charging area for our electric buses. Uh, someone will be there to teach you and you can ask all your questions about how we use our electric buses. After that, we'll move to the workshop where the mechanics will give you a tour through the workshop and then you'll come back out into the, the bus, the vintage bus area. Yeah. Uh, just follow our directions as it is a live depot. We want to keep you safe. Thank you. bus just move down into the bay area here. Take all your belongings with you please. Thank you. Okay, we're going to charge all of our new electric buses. Um, so this has been a um, job for me for a few years now but in terms of construction we've built this in about a year so really quick. Um, this, this gantry spans 13 lanes of our depot so across the whole depot and we can charge 13 buses simultaneously. Um, 450 kilowatt charging from each one of these locations. So super high power. So if any of you are lucky enough to have an electric car at home and you just use the plug on the wall, it's about 250 times more powerful than that. Now for those that can remember a 40 kilowatt bulb, it's about 11,000 volts all on at the same time as well. So quite a lot of power that's coming in. We have um, two feeds from the grid that come in, one of which we use all the time. And then we monitor that. If it's a failure, it'll switch over to the second grid connection in about 10 seconds. If that fails, then we've got a backup generator that we can then use, and that switches in in about a minute. So we've got plenty of power on the side to be able to uh, cope with most things. Um, so like I say, super fast charging. So this is a slightly different way of charging buses than what you would have seen in different places. So the buses go out in the morning, they do their AM heat. So that's go take them to work, take the kids to school, they come back to the depot, and we charge them for about 10 or 15 minutes. And that's it, they're fully charged again and they go and park and they're ready for their afternoon shift. And then in the afternoon, they go out again, they'll do, they'll do their runs again, 100, 120 kilometers, come back in, 10 to, 20, 10 to 15 minutes and they're ready again. So that gives us a lot of advantages. Yeah. So if we have a problem with any of the equipment or we have a bigger problem with the grid, then they've got enough power to do their next runs. Still on the bus yeah. all the time. So we're only using a little bit of the, the, the available power within the bus. They can do about 350 kilometers, maybe a little bit more, but we don't want to use that. We want to keep it, keep it in reserve in case we need it. Um, what else have we got? So we've got two buses here. These are the, two of the same buses as what you've seen down the front. So custom denning, uh, designed and built in Western Australia. And then we've got a Yutong here as well, which is a Chinese bus, but it comes in partially built. And then they finish it off in Australia to get that local content. The Transport for New South Wales are working towards that 50% local content, even on the buses which are important. Um, how does it work? Right, so if you're looking at the panto up here, you'll see the little square. That's a Wi Fi controller. So when the, bu when the bus comes in and they want to charge it, the driver will press a button next to it. That will start it talking via Wi Fi. Once it's identified itself, it says, Right, I'm a bus, I'm here, I'm underneath the panto, please come and charge me. The panto will come down and it will do some safety checks. So it will check the safety of the equipment. But it also checks the safety of the bus as well to make sure that it's okay to charge it. Once that's done, it then opens up the system and it will start to charge at that fast rate. So I'll get Sharon just to press the button on the thing. We've 
the timing on warning, it takes about 21 seconds from the time he presses the button to when the panto comes down. So, um, and then after that, like I say, it does its checks and then it will uh, start to charge. doing a couple of safety checks before it livens everything up and it'll be powering about now. Um, we've, got, we've got the system set up so that when we get to 90% state of charge in the bus then it'll automatically stop the charging and it, and it goes back up again um, and then we'll go and park it in the range ready for its next, next trips that day. So has anybody got any questions? So depending on the bus, depending on the conditions, depending on the temperature, depending on the whether it's going uphill, downhill, but we're getting around about 0 0.8, 0 0.9 kilowatt hours per kilometer. So not that bad. So my electric car does about 0 0.4, 0 0.45. So considering that's your car compared to the bus, it's actually really, really good. Uh, no, no problem at all. Yeah. So these, these Pantograph chargers have been widely used all over Europe, but they're mainly used for opportunity charging on the road itself. So when you pull up at a bus stop, it will come down and it will give it a quick flash. Um, what we've done is something slightly different, which is put these into a depot. Um, so we're, we're actually the first people to put the high powered version. There are Pantos in depots, but not doing what we're doing. Any other questions? Uh, so at the moment we've just got 13 buttons because we're still in this final bit of testing and positioning. Um, but you'll see that um, at this depot there's 187 rigid buses and 32 empty buses. By next Christmas all of the rigid buses will be electric. So really, really quick. By Christmas we'll be getting close to 100 mate. So lots and lots of buses really, really quickly, which is great for the public. So we can get rid of some of these 27 year old rattly buses that we're you know struggling to keep on the road and we can give you all new buses and, and electric buses so much cleaner much quieter much smoother um yeah looking forward to it so this will be capable of doing the whole depot and we have you'll see there's a few plugins that we've got dotted around they're mainly in case somebody from a different region that might not have pantograph charging Pumps, and then we can still charge their bus. Or if we, or you know, the rails are on the roof. If there's like it hits a tree, or like, there's a little bit of damage, or something like that, then we can still charge the bus. Yeah. Are you thinking of replacing the double decker as well? Yes, eventually. They so it won't be pan tight because they'll be too high. But yes, we will be looking at doing the double decker. Ready? Yeah. Cool. Any other questions? Great. All right.
film me Monday to Friday, you walk into this bay, and it'll be all cornered off. So only trained personnel will be able to come into this area. Even though it's only new to us, so we've only got 13 Zs at the moment operating. Um, if you come this time next year to this yard, every two axle plus in this yard will be all fully electric, which is very exciting times. So in saying that, with our upskilling, it means training. So a lot of our training happens internally with our OEM manufacturers, which they'll come out on site. Also, that will save some of our OEMs are overseas based. We actually send them overseas to get some training as well. We also get some training And with the upskilling and training and so on means high voltage means it's related to the so like the whole tooling side of it changes as well. So our electric bus is 650 volts. Means all our tooling has to be insulated. So we just got some of our insulated tooling on the display here at the moment. So your normal screwdriver has to be insulated up to the thousand um, volts. Or your multimeter. So you have your normal multimeter from your thousand volts and special multimeter. When you're isolating the vehicle, you've got to wear high voltage and thousand volts gloves. When you're working on the high voltage system as well, you've got to look at work on rubber mats. So it, it's definitely a whole different when we do transition from Z, which is it's good, what we put on display today is some of our older diesel engines. So what we're moving away is these dirty diesel engines. And as you can see here, this is one of the, one of our dirty diesel engines out of our, one of our old buses. So it just puts in the scope of the size of our engines that we have in our buses, and followed by your transmission, which drives it, and your differential. So with our scope, where we do today, a lot of our labour for our mechanics is keeping the engine running, port leaks, vice versa, everything. A lot of people do say, with the diesels, uh, with the electrics coming in, will there be will there be mechanics leave? Like the work, you don't need to be staff members to run the fleet, which is actually incorrect. So with the Zebs coming in, the preventative maintenance, so your servicing increases. So instead of a, on average, a diesel bus comes in every three months for a service, the set will come in every month for a service. So that's how our people will start level the same, which is good. Um, on that, I won't take too long, so I know he's waiting for the bus, I've got to keep on mine on time. Um, got any questions? Question about tyres. Question about tyres? Yeah, like the big wheels. How many what? do we use? How many do we use? Whoa. I think we we use up to a minimum of 30 tyres a week. We love the engine. Yeah, and big tyres too, the bigger mum's cars. It's only when they get trained, so yes. So with the training side, so we'll have a handset of staff that will come in and actually uh, do the isolation side. Yeah, I love it. So, in saying with that too, we we got it, like I say your older workforce, and we we keep on saying so you, you, you guys might say your, your mechanics that are maybe going to the retirement age, do they want to upskill? Maybe not, but your, your, your suspension, steering, all that still stays the same. We get our lucky, our younger guys that are even dependent on the technology, they will get trained. Did that make sense? Yeah, that's good. Any other questions? If we're, if we're done and we want to walk back to the, the all the other buses, um, yeah, yeah.
Oh, the ones that have shazzy issues. Mm. How many of them are going to enter oh, service soon? I mean, I don't know. We haven't. All of the Arctic repairs were done by whale. I didn't know you guys were doing Arctic. We only just got some. Oh, right. We haven't. Uh, I'd also like to welcome our CEO, Mr. David Franks of Keolis Downer. And uh, yeah, thank you, David. Can I just say a big welcome to everybody uh, and thank you very much for coming along and sharing today's event with us. Uh, we are a transport company, but um, very much I believe that we're also part of the community. And this is a community day and we're really pleased to have you with us and see what's going on in, be, behind the scenes. Uh, the other thing I'd just like to mention is that um, uh, you, you, you've seen the, the new electric vehicles that we're just starting to introduce here. You've seen that the electric um, overhead gantries in the distance, um, but this is the start of a, uh, a major transformation of bus services on the northern beaches. So currently we operate um, around 400 odd vehicles on the northern beaches, and 300, about 330 of them are all going to be converted into brand new electric vehicles. And you are seeing the start of that here today. So enjoy the rest of the day, enjoy the smoking ceremony, and thanks very much, Uncle Brendan, for, for that, uh, that great um, welcome. Thank you. Thank you. 